You've been there. Your Databricks job is taking forever. It costs way more than you budgeted, and when your manager asks why, you're stuck explaining that the data just isn't partitioned right. That is not just frustrating. It is career limiting, because when you can't explain performance or cost, you look like you don't have control over your own pipelines. But what if I told you there's a newer technique, liquid clustering, that not only fixes those problems, but can also make you stand out in job interviews and on the job. Here is why you should care. Mastering liquid clustering is one of those rare skills that checks every box. It makes your queries faster, your compute bills smaller, and your governance cleaner. And when you bring it up in an interview, you instantly are signaling to the interviewer, this engineer isn't just keeping up, they're staying ahead of the curve. Stick with me for the next eight minutes and I will walk you through how it will impact your next interview and how you'll bring a tool that separates you from the crowd. This will prove that you not only know how to engineer for both performance, but also for cost. Here's the proof. Traditional Z ordering, you needed to be able to rewrite the whole table to recluster. That is slow and expensive. With liquid clustering, Databricks automatically maintains clustering as the data is inserted, updated, or even deleted. Every benchmark is showing that query runtimes are cut in half and storage costs are reduced because you're not constantly rewriting massive files. It's flexible, cost-aware, and built for messy real-world data. The natural question is, how do you actually use liquid clustering and how do you explain it in a way that makes you look like the smartest engineer in the interview room? Step one, what is it? Liquid clustering is a table level optimization. In Databricks, it replaces statistic Z order indexing. It lets you define clustering keys like customer ID or event date and Databricks dynamically reorganizes the files as new data it flows in. No more manual optimized with Z order scripts that are clogging up your jobs. Why does it matter? I have three reasons for you. One, performance. Queries that filter on clustered columns scan far fewer files. That means faster runtime and lower compute, which lead us to number two, cost. You are avoiding expensive full rewrites because the clustering is happening incrementally. And finally, you have governance. It's predictable. You know queries are going to consistently hit optimized paths, not depend on when you last ran a manual optimize. Here are how the three approaches stack up. On the screen now, you see the old way. This is partitioning. You see we're creating the table using delta partition by the order date as select all from our raw sales table. This is good for high cardinality columns but too many partitions really crush performance. A newer but still older method is Z ordering. Here you see we're optimizing the sales data at sales table and we are doing a Z order by the customer ID and the order date. This is good, it improves file pruning, but it requires expensive table rewrites every time you optimize. Finally, we have liquid clustering. Here you see that we are creating or replacing this table. We are defining our table and then we're telling it what it's clustering by. And so we are clustering by here, the customer ID or the order date. There is an option that we are going to show you in a minute that is even more dynamic and super exciting. This means that there are no rewrites, no manually optimizing jobs and Databricks is maintaining the clustering as that data evolves. Now. The super secret method is that you could also cluster by auto, which means that you're going to let Databricks dynamically decide what it's going to cluster by. This helps in a lot of instances, but beware that you may have to actually revert back to using the specific cluster by columns, depending on your observation of that actual performance. Sometimes Databricks does get it wrong. Step four here is position 
this in your interviews. When you're asked about performance optimization or cost reduction, and you will be asked for one of those two things, if not both, drop this line. I've partitioned by Z order before, but in my more recent work, I've been leveraging liquid clustering in Databricks. It differs from static approaches by automatically maintaining clustering as that data evolves and is ingested, which reduces query cost and compute and eliminates that expensive maintenance that goes on. This answer shows that you understand not only the new thing that maybe you just learned just now, but you also understand that history and you're developing cutting edge methods to help to maintain that efficiency in your cost and in your performance. By mastering liquid clustering, you're not just making your pipelines faster, you're building a story that you could take into any interview. I know how to reduce cloud costs, speed up queries, and keep governance predictable. That is the kind of answer that makes interviewers sit up straight and lean in. Let me give you two pitfalls to avoid that you may also bring up in interviews to show how intelligent you are. So pitfall number one, treating it like magic. Liquid clustering isn't this automatic fairy dust. You still need to choose your clustering keys wisely. Pick columns that are commonly filtered for in your queries, not just random fields. Otherwise, you're going to waste resources without really seeing any of the benefits. Pitfall number two, forgetting about file size. Databricks recommends clustering on columns with enough cardinality. If you cluster on a column with just a handful of unique values, you're going to end up with skewed files and performance is actually going to reduce. So the key takeaway here is liquid clustering amplifies good design, but it's not fixing your bad design. Now it's your turn. What is the biggest performance bottleneck that you're fighting in Databricks right now? Let me know down in the comments. It helps to really give me fuel and ideas for our future videos. And if you want a liquid clustering interview playbook, click the link down in the description. It is going to give you some practice before your next call for your next interview. Grab that link. Now, if you are ready to identify the other inefficiencies in your Databricks notebooks right now, take a look at this video and let me know what you think.